Thank you so much, everybody, for, for coming tonight. Thank you. Uh, it's always great to come back to Toronto, and especially like to say that the Fidel or Racer and the Jailbird is just a fantastic honor for me, and it means it means a lot. So uh, I'm not, I didn't come along. I brought some great people with me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to Adele. Extra Kukuros, uh, one of the is, is, is the best. Uh, the first is also Matthias Kuhnert. And of course, uh, two persons I, I owe them a lot, they're the producers of the stone and uh, they did a lot, of, a lot of fantastic work in order to get this, this thing possible, you know. But for many don't get the the program. So, uh, so that's that's it. We'll, we'll see you afterwards. For yes. Day. All right, enjoy it. Thank you. process of creating stories and uh, you know being driven by by things that you know inspire me and uh, during the writing of Bullhead um, there was something about you know for those who have seen it there's a you know, the main character Jackie has is, uh, is kind of the absence of love is, is something that is very you know present um, and I, I was kind of just kind of Brainstorming a little bit about the backstory's brother, you know, giving him some bit like an opposite element of it, and uh, and then I by some in a flow of inspiration, all of a sudden there was so much a whole story coming out uh, where it was you know all about the absolute presence of love, and and then combined with the fact that I was you know looking for to create stories that were set in the typical Belgian crime scenes, which is in this case the this notorious gangster crews of the 80s and the 90s in Brussels. Uh, they were very notorious, and also their love stories. You know, they had a couple of them were like really with their, their, their women were almost as much in the picture as they were. They were kind of a little bit, well, let's say, kind of rock stars in a way. And uh, so these things came all together, and that was actually the root of this whole of racer and the jailbird. And uh, well, and the challenges were, yeah, quite big. <laughs> as every movie is in a way, so, but yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask both of you, the, the, it, there's so much of the film that's about finding this tenderness in these very, very tough people, um, and how that works together in building this incredibly palpable relationship for the audience, and so what was your process in pre-production, um, building the characters and also building the relationship together? I, I think we both were lucky that it, it grew organically, and it, it sounds like a, a simple answer, but it, it, it just, the first time we met, you might believe it or not, this is the first time I met this person, I just hugged her for two minutes as if I hadn't seen her for 20 years and she was my best friend. And that was the kickoff of, of whatever happened during the, the, the process of creation. Yes. <laughs> he hugged me. <laughs> And I was there, I was watching, and I was like, like we were drunk, but it's, it was still on this. No, but he's right. And I was like twerking in a minute. 
I think that's true. Really <laughs> no, but I think you all have to oh, did I each actually did have it? to find the silence uh, you have in your character, the secrets, everything, the loss, the scar, his childhood, mine, family. But after for the chemistry, it was easy because it's like we are the same animals. Just I don't know. It was easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't really change that. It was Le Fidel is the original title, and we kind of also added an international title in English to it, which I both created the titles. Like Le Fidel was always, you know, the main title. Uh, but Racer and the Jailbird kind of gives this this other side of this film, referring to. And to, to the movie history of these kind of titles that has about, but where it kind of represents the couples, you know, like duos. And uh, it's a bit, maybe a little bit old school and a little bit poetic, but uh, it's, a, it's a different side. Um, we could have translated it, but The Faithful kind of didn't work that well. And I rather would like to say Le Fidel or even an explain. And then maybe, yeah, Racer and the Jailbirds, it just popped up and I liked it. Yeah, there's a country actually where, where a lot of gangsters used to go and hide out. The South American, like, in relation to the, the, the bandits that were, yeah. that we refer to in the movies, not as, as total inspiration. They used to hide out in Brazil, South America, in uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Nicaragua, they all went to South America. You know, there's the tango, there's love. <laughs> I, 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 I could imagine them like, you know. To, to well, that's because he's, he's, he's in a permanent state of um, unpredictability of his life, and, and, and his, his, his safe house has changed all the time. So everything is, 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 you know, in a permanent state of. Everything is new, everything is under construction because he might have to run away again. And that's why everything is wrapped up. I know in the States. I've been into places and houses where people live for 20 years and I see the couch wrapped up. So, <laughs> and and I, still, I still see the TV wrapped up in glass. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you never know, you're going to leave. Exactly. <laughs> don't do any of her own driving. All of it. Ah. What? If you, were, <laughs> if you were racing yourself, all the ah, racing. Sometimes I wish I could say yes, but a girl, a professional, made it. Otherwise, I won't be there. <laughs> yeah. well, and the big secret is she just had her driving license, I think, two days before production. <laughs> because I felt it two times. <laughs> Actually, the, the, the lady who was the, the stunt driver was also going to, you know, help you a little bit, like, controlling the, the blue portion. And at some point, we were, like, in pre-production, I was just texting the girls, like, so how's it going? And she sends me back this little video, and I see, like, the blue portion of parking lot, like, <laughs> I was like, wow, that goes well. <laughs> but actually, it was kind of a. But I was drunk again. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought actually, it was in good. Europe, you can drink and drive, so no problem. You can parking park lots, parking lots, only parking lots. The question was, is there a metaphor connection between Gigi and the cage dog? What do you think, all of you? Yes or no? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Well, the beauty of it all is, if, if I can answer yeah, it, please. I, I think, honestly, I think, I think fear is an animal you can, uh, you can train. And, and, you know, he grew up apparently with an abusive father who also uses dogs to uh, manifest um, intimidation and fear and to, you know, uh, impose that on his son. And that's why these dogs uh, became an element of fear and, you know, um, and the you know, that scared, you know, the biggest part of his life, he was scared of dogs, but at the end, he faces his fear, and he knows how to work with his fear, and his fear becomes his partner, uh, because he trains the animal, so to speak, in, in, a, you know, in a metaphorical way, and his fear becomes his liberator, because in the end, it's the dog that enables him to, you know, free himself. Yeah, I think in the end, yes. <laughs> But, uh, Freestyle! <laughs> yeah. yeah, because actually what it, uh, what it really was... Okay, now let's rap to this. <laughs> sure. It did a hip hop. It did a hip hop. You're drunk again. <laughs> yeah, we just came from a restaurant. So. It's true. 
like with normal and intelligent. <laughs> yeah, so now we're getting from that. Um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, but the, no, the thing about the dogs also, and it's totally, what he said is totally right, like, uh, not, that's true. Um, but <laughs> I also think that there was, uh, there was a part of, um, you know, when, when, it was also some kind of a metaphor for love, in a way, because um, when, when, you, when a dog is raised in a cage, right, he, he wants to escape. And when well, you open the door, the dog goes out of our room. And if you just leave him doing, by sunset, he probably will just go back into the cage to sleep. And he will be totally fine as long as you leave the door open. So if you close it again, he will be like, ah, let me out. And they like, open. And so if you, you, you all have you know, dogs, they like to sleep with the butt inside and the head outside, like on the, on the edge. And it's a kind of being caged but then not really, there is this kind of feeling that you're free, in a way. And for me, that's kind of love. It's, it's kind of the same little thing, it's like being... It's like you want to be connected, but not attached. <laughs> yeah, freestyle! <laughs> All right. <laughs> definitely, brother, definitely. You're a rocket, man, you're a rocket. <laughs> it's true. But there's many things to say, you know, we give a bunch of interviews, so you might kind of read more about what we were trying to say. Well, on that note, I want to thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you.